Today we're going to talk about how to ensure you can build a dock or receive permission for a dock that's already existing on your new lakefront property in the Okanagan and we're starting now. Hi, I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Burn and Salt Fowler and I've watched the regulations on dock building change over the years until the most recent 2020 changes to the Okanagan Large Lakes Foreshore Protocol. I think it's really important for anyone buying on the waterfront to know if the house they're buying has a conforming dock and if the dock isn't conforming, what are the ramifications for them as the new landowners? As realtors, more often than not, we find that a lakefront home sale comes right down to the dock. We're not selling the house anymore, we're just selling the dock right at the end of the day. I will explain the permission process first. There's numerous steps that have to be taken in order to ensure a dock can be built or permission received for an existing dock on a lakefront property. If you haven't watched our first video in the series on the important riparian considerations when purchasing a lakefront property, click on the link above or below to watch that video also. The first step is to determine where the property lies in terms of foreshore sensitivity zones. You may have heard of the terms red zone and black zone. Here is what they mean. First of all, the black zone. This is the critical habitat value zone. In this zone, no new construction is generally allowed, although if the dock was in place and was or could have been authorized prior to December 31st, 2009, then that dock may be able to be rebuilt or replaced, maybe. If it is allowed, then there would be likely new requirements probably flow through decking and things like that. Number two is the red zone, high habitat value. In this zone, you're allowed no floating structures. You have to have a light penetrating material for the walkway and a biologist must determine that the pilings won't be in a spawning substrate. Number three is the yellow zone, which is moderate. And in this zone, as long as you abide by the regulations, you can generally build what you want here, as long as the dock design criteria of 2020 is followed. Followed. Number four is the no color zone. This is low or unknown. This is the same as the yellow zone. You can build what you want. However, you can build also whenever you want in this zone, unlike the other three zones. Those other three zones cannot have work done on any private moorage between September 30th to June 1st of any year. To determine the zone of a property, there's a link down below. Step two is determining the activity risk. The range of activity risks range from low to high, with a high risk activity being the construction of a new marina or a boat launch or something like that, moderate being the construction of a new dock, whether it be a pile-driven dock or removable dock, and low being a repair or upgrade of an existing dock or maybe a new water line, something like that. Step number three, submit an application. This step is usually where the QEP comes into play, the qualified environmental professional such as a biologist. For all moderate and high activity risks, which include the building of a new dock of any sort, you must hire a QP and the moderate to high risk QP checklist must be filled in and supplied to Front Counter BC, as well as a marine habitat assessment report conducted and submitted. If you're purchasing a home with an existing dock, in addition to determining the zone which zone the property is in, you have to determine whether the structure qualifies for a general permission or a specific permission. So let's look at both of those. First of all, the general permission. A general permission means the current dock complies with all the newest regulations. So as long as a person constructs and uses their dock in accordance with the terms and conditions contained in the general permission, they will be deemed authorized. This is definitely your best case scenario. If the dock has a general permission, it means it complies with everything and no formal transfer is even required when the property changes hands. So the dock automatically transfers to the new owners once they're on title. The second type of permission is the specific permission. This can be applied for if the dock is to be located where general permissions are prohibited, or more likely around here where the dock doesn't adhere to the requirements of the general permission. If the dock complied with the regulation at the time it was built, yet doesn't comply with the newest regulations, a specific permission may be granted. However, the specific permission must be applied for every time a property changes hands. 
so it's not automatic. So some of the main restrictions involved in building a new dock or having an existing dock receive a general permission, all the following criteria must be met. These are from the dock design guideline that was redone in 2020. One, the dock including boat lift must be at least five meters from the neighboring property line or six meters from a dedicated beach access. Two, no boat houses or coverings in any way. Three, docks cannot be more than 42 meters long. Four, docks cannot be more than 1.5 meter wide on the walkway. Five, docks cannot have more than a three meter wide platform at the end. Six, new dock construction only during the appropriate timing window specified by Fisheries and Oceans Canada to reduce harm to fish and fish habitat, which is June 1st to September 30th for yellow, red, and black zones and any time in the no color zone as mentioned before. Seven, there can only be one dock per property. Eight, the upland owner must have a homeowner's insurance policy that extends to the structure. Nine, no non-moorage type structures allowed. 10, no filling below the present natural boundary. 11, no dredging of the foreshore. 12, no solid core structures are allowed. And 13, there's a new regulation for batter board panels for Okanagan and lake structures as well, so that has to be considered. Saying all this, if you're looking at a property built after 2004, it may be grandfathered as existing non-conforming under a general permission. And then again, if a general permission isn't possible, then they may be able to receive a specific permission. However, you have to know also that any additions or modifications or anything that was built without a permit that do not conform with the standards of when the dock was built usually require some modifications to bring them in into compliance with current standards. So there might be a few tweaks to make to that dock. In a nutshell, it's complicated. We always highly recommend discussing with a dock builder, and I'm sure you can see why it's so important to call a realtor when you're buying or selling on the lake, someone who specializes in lakefront and resort properties. Because like I say, it's complicated. If you're looking for a lakefront specialist, if you're selling or if you're buying, don't forget to call Remax Vernon Salt Fowler and just add salt.